Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at AWS reInvent 2021, our annual conference here where theCUBE goes out the ground. We're in person, live in person, also a hybrid event online as well, a lot of great content flowing. Day one in the books, keynotes out there, big news, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Got a great segment here with AWS Marketplace, a revolution of how customers are, are buying and deploying their technologies. Steve Orban, GM of, of AWS Marketplace and Control Services, and Chris Casey, worldwide head of business development of data exchange for AWS. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. John, thanks a lot for having us. Pleasure to be here. So I'm a huge fan of the marketplace. People know that I, I believe that ultimately it's going to be automated in any way and that procurement in enterprises as they buy and as people work together. And, and the big theme this year is kind of this whole purpose-built stack where SaaS is going to be a lot of integration where people are working together. You see multiple partners plugging in and snapping into AWS. That was a big part of Adam's keynote today. So this really kind of lays a perfect foundation for the path that you guys have been on. That's which right. Which is partnering, go to market, buying, and consuming technology. So what's the update? Give us a, uh, an overview, a high level, Stephen, of, of Marketplace. Yeah, John, and again, thanks for having us. It's awesome to be here meeting with customers and partners again for the first time in a couple years. Great to be meeting in person and interacting. So we're super excited about where we're going with the Marketplace. As you all probably know, customers in every industry are really thinking about how they transform their business using modern technology. And it's not just about the technology that they're building themselves, it's also the tools that they want to get from their partners, which we're super excited to, to be able to offer them on Marketplace. We're about to have our 10 year anniversary. We launched the first version of Marketplace in April of 2012. And back then, you know, it was a very simple e-commerce website that builders could come and buy Amazon machine instances and pay by the hour running popular open source packaged or operating system software. But we've come an awful long way since then and changed the surface area of the business quite a bit. Um, from a product type perspective, we now offer uh, our partners the opportunity to list and, and meter their SaaS solutions. Um, adding to the AMI base, we allow uh, partners to, to vend their container images and we have some new updates I'll share with you in just a second on that this year. In 2019, customers asked us for the same experience that they have buying software to, to apply to the way they license data, so we launched AWS Data Exchange in 2019 and then in 2020, last year, we, we, we recognized that customers wanted to be able to bundle professional services offerings in with the software that they buy, so we launched a professional services offering type two. And then when you start to combine that with all of the different procurement motions that we now support, it's no longer just the self-service e-commerce capabilities, but when customers want to privately negotiate deals with their vendors, they can do so with our private offer capability, which we were the first to launch in 2017, which we then complemented in 2018 with the ability for customers to negotiate with a channel partner, a reseller, or a managed service provider of their choice. So, when you start to combine all of these different product type offerings and ways our partners can go to market through Marketplace in an automated way with all of these procurement options, we now have 2,000 sellers listing more than 12,000 offerings on the Marketplace, which more than 325,000 customers around the world buy either directly from the seller or from the channel partner of their choice. And when you add all that up, we've seen this year alone billions of products and services sold through the marketplace. Wow, what a rocket ship. From a catalog to a full-blown comprehensive consumption environment. Which, by the way, the market wants that fast speed. Speed That's right. to time to market. Okay, so give me the update here at reInvent. What announcements did you guys just announced at the Partner Summit this week. What's the, what's the news? Yeah, so there's a couple. I'm going to talk about one and then I'll hand it over to Chris to talk about the data exchange announcements. But the first announcement we made at the Partner Keynote yesterday uh, was around our container offering. So in 2018, we launched the ability for partners to list container-based offerings, so their software in containers, whether that be NetApp, Druva, um, Palo Alto, or others who are having their security or other software and containers that could then be deployed by customers into the AWS managed container environments. So that could be deployed into Amazon EKS, ECS, or AWS Fargate, which is great for customers who run their container workloads in our managed services, but we have a lot of customers who run their own Kubernetes environments, either on um, EC2, on AWS, on-premises, or using another one of the um, Kubernetes uh, platforms that are out there like Red Hat OpenShift. So, we had a lot of customers who said, I also want that third-party software to be easily deployable into my own Kubernetes environment. So we were super happy to announce on Monday what we call now the AWS Marketplace for Containers Anywhere, 
which allows our partners like a Palo Alto or a CrowdStrike or a Cisco to list containers on the marketplace that can be deployed into any Kubernetes environment um, that the customer is running, whether that be on, on AWS, on-premises, into VMware, Tanzu, Red Hat, OpenShift, Rancher, um, or wherever, they, wherever they're running their Kubernetes workloads. So that's super exciting. And then we have a couple of announcements on data exchange I'd let Chris talk about also. Right, Chris, get into the data exchange. I'm going to come back to the containers because there's some really important things I want to drill into. Go ahead. Yeah, data yeah, there's, there's, there's two pretty significant, which we believe are game-changing, capabilities that we've recently announced with Data Exchange. The first one is AWS Data Exchange for APIs. And really why this is quite significant is customers had told us that not a lot, not all of their data use cases were really geared towards them consuming full flat files, which is what we launched Data Exchange with in terms of a delivery capability two years ago. And so with AWS Data Exchange for APIs, customers can come and procure an API from a third party data provider and only uh, procure the data that they need via an API request response. Um, what, why this is so significant is for data providers, they can bring their APIs to AWS Data Exchange, make them really easily available for data subscribers to find and subscribe to. And then for a data subscriber, they're interacting with that API in the same way that they're interacting with other AWS APIs, and they can enjoy the same governance and control characteristics using services like IAM and CloudTrail. Um, so that flexibility in a new delivery type is, is, is really meaningful for data subscribers. The second uh, announcement that we, we really lent into yesterday was the preview of Amazon Data Exchange for Amazon Redshift. And this capability gives customers, um, data subscribers, the ability to access data in the data warehouse supported by Amazon Redshift. And, and the unique aspect about this is the data subscriber doesn't actually have to copy the data out of Amazon Redshift if they don't want to. They can query the data directly. And what's really meaningful for them there is they know that they're, they're actually querying the latest data that the data provider has because they're actually querying the same data warehouse table that the data provider is publishing into. Data providers really love this, especially those, one, those data providers that were already using Amazon Redshift to store their data, because now they don't have to manage the entitlements and subscription aspects of really making their data available to as many of their data consumers as possible. So basically, what you're saying is it makes it easier for them to keep an update. They don't have to worry about merchandising that service. They just have APIs rolled in. And the other one is for developers to actually integrate new APIs into their role in whatever services they're building. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, and it's, it's really the ultimate flexibility for a developer coming to AWS Data Exchange. If their use case warrants them consuming a full data set, you know, maybe they want to look at 10 years of stock history, you know, using file-based data delivery and immutable copies of those files through our S3 object data sharing um, capabilities is fit for their use case. Um, but if they want to dynamically interact with data, AWS Data Exchange for APIs uh, is a brand new delivery capability that is really unlocking and we hope, we're really excited to see the innovation. It's that like comes you're bringing the API economy even, even further to the customer base on the third party. The question I have for both of you guys on the containers and the API is security, because you know, we've seen with containers, approved containers being vetted, making sure that they're, they're not going to have any malware in there or APIs, making sure everything's clean and tight. What's the, what are they, what's the security concerns? Can you share how you guys are talking about that? Yeah, for sure. So it probably comes as no surprise to you or folks who might be listening or tuning in that security has always been AWS's number one priority. We build it into everything we do. This offering is no different. Uh, we scan all of the, the container images that are published to our catalog before they're exposed to customers for any kind of known vulnerabilities. We're monitoring our catalog every single day um, against new ones that might come out. And customers actually tell us it's one of the things that they like about buying software on Marketplace better than, let's say, other third-party repositories that don't have the same level of vetting because they can kind of build that constant trust um, into, in, into well, what we're doing. Well, that trust is the key because you can get containers anywhere. You don't know what's, where it's that's from. Right. So you guys are actually vetting the containers, we, we making sure indeed. they're certified, so to speak, with Amazon's security checkbox. We, we, we are indeed, and uh, we have a number of security ISVs who are participating in both our containers <laughs> and our containers anywhere. Um, it's one of the, the, the most uh, high performing categories for us. As I said before, we have vendors like CrowdStrike and Cisco and yeah. Palo Alto who are you know, uh, um, vending various different endpoint network security um, uh, offerings I mean, it's, in our it's container It's what catalogs are for. Well. I mean, it's what trust is all about, making sure that you guys can put your name behind it yeah. in the marketplace. Okay, let's take through the consumption. What's the current state of the art with the marketplace with enterprises? You guys have a lot of programs. We're constantly hearing great things about the go-to-market with joint selling on yep. the top tier. 
Uh, I think there's like the top tier category, and then you've got all kinds of other incentives for companies to deploy in the marketplace and sell their stuff. That's right, so we're, we're really starting to hit our stride with uh, co-selling with our partners and some of our, um, you know, our top most performing partners. They lean into every feature and capability and incentive program that we develop, um, give us a lot of feedback on it. Just like we work backwards from customer needs to help them transform their procurement, we work backwards from our partner needs to help them optimize their go-to-market channel. And uh, you know, we take feedback from our partners uh, very seriously. And then we build things like private offers when they want to custom negotiate deals with their customers or channel partner private offers when they want to do that with the channel partner of their yeah. choice. And we're just continuing to listen to that feedback and, and, and helping them grow grow their business and, and, and frankly, you know, while a lot of partners love that we're able to help get them new customers, one of their favorite things about co-selling with us is that they're able to close larger contracts faster yeah. because they're doing that in concert with the AWS field teams and taking advantage of the fact that the customer's already building on AWS. So I know we got a couple minutes left. I want to get this out there because I heard, I talked to Adam uh, prior to reInvent and he said, quote, we don't want, cus customers don't want to reinvent the wheel. And they see that's why this whole purpose built kind of thing is getting traction. What do you guys got in the marketplace that's I would that would you'd call leveraging stuff that's been built so customers don't have to rebuild things? Yeah. I mean, if you just look back to the very beginning of Marketplace, when we launched the Marketplace of Amazon Machine Instances, it was basically pre-built AMIs that customers could deploy into their own accounts already running the third-party software that they wanted. And when I think about where we're going with things like procurement governance, uh, we developed a thing called a private marketplace where customers could curate the various different solutions from our catalog that they want because they want to be able to control who in their enterprise can buy what. And that's just a whole bunch of manual work that they would have had to do and reinvent the wheel from every customer to every customer. And instead we just delivered them a capability to do that. Same with our managed entitlements capability where they can share entitlements across AWS accounts within their own organizational units without having to manually track who's used how much of what yeah. and report that back to the seller to make sure that they're compliant with the terms and conditions. We handle all that so our customers don't have to continue to reinvent the it's wheel. It's a nice flywheel because it's like open source concept. It's like you're building on things that are already built and you build on top of it. As you guys see these recipes get, or workflows get rolled out, you put them back in the marketplace. That's right, that's right. Always learning from customers and partners. And while we've grown quite a bit, <laughs> 2,000 sellers, 325,000 customers, and billions of uh, dollars of products and services sold, we still have so much more to go. Well, with data, between data exchange and what you guys got going on, it's not, it's not, it's complex, as it gets more and more complex. I know you guys are abstracting away the complexity and the heavy lifting for customers. What's on the horizon for you guys? What are you tackling next? What's the next mountain you're going to climb? Yeah, there's still more automation we can drive into the co-selling motion. And uh, um, uh, so that's one. There's more procurement and governance uh, capabilities that we think we're going to be able to add to customers. Basically what they're telling us is are the chief procurement officers that we face off with, they want to be able to get the best deal at the lowest price uh, with the best and most favorable terms and conditions. So we're trying to work backwards from that need to make sure we have the right category selection wherever they might want it, whether it be an infrastructure provider or a line of business, um, uh, a line of business solution, and make sure they're able to get exactly that. And so Chris, back to you for your vision. Obviously, analytics is a big part of SaaS and platform, billing and metering and where the data is, data exchange, I almost imagine that's going to have a nice headroom to it in terms of what you can do with data exchange. Yeah, if you look at the announcements we've recently made and, and sort of our vision for data exchange is to help any AWS customer find, subscribe to, and use third party data in the cloud. Uh, and th these two recent announcements really help on that use portion where someone can actually create you know, shorten the time to value for them using some of our analytics services like Amazon Redshift. So we'll continue to innovate there and listen to customers in terms of their feedback and how we can help them really integrate their data pipelines with the rest of the AWS ecosystem. But we're also continuing to invest in the, the find and subscribe to portion. Stephen talked about some of the automation and, and we've built data exchange on top of a lot of the, the plumbing and building blocks that AWS Marketplace already had, which, which was a, a pretty significant leg up for us. But certainly the way in which people discover and find new data sets that might help them in an analytics problem is certainly an area that, that you know, we're, we're going to continue to lean into. Data exchange has been around for a long, long time now. It's in the cloud generation. And I think you guys have such a great job on the marketplace and this next gen as more and more platform specific products are coming out, partners are snapping together, a lot more integration. So a lot more action coming on integration, I can imagine. That's right, that's right, definitely. That's right. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Steve, great to see you. Chris.
Thanks, thanks for having on. us. Appreciate it. John, right. thanks for having us, always a pleasure. Great to have all the action from Amazon here. Marketplace, continuing to be the preferred way to consume and deploy technology, and soon to be an integration hub for this next generation cloud. I'm John Furrier, theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in worldwide tech coverage. Be right back.